Hello and welcome to Up The Villa podcast. So today we come out winners against Crystal Palace 3-0 and in my opinion, an, a phenomenal performance from the boys today uh, in the circumstances, obviously, of going down to 10 men, albeit that we were 1-0 up. I think the second half was just sensational, a real good performance. Um, you know, we could use the word we showed character, but we didn't look like we were on the ropes at all throughout that game. I think the belief in the team is absolutely huge. And it, again, it was enjoyable to watch first half. We were dynamic going forward. We were just absolutely great. And I think we're sitting in the league now sixth with games in hand on all the teams around us. Good times to be a Villa fan. How are you, Luke? I'm good, thanks, mate. Yep, great times to be a Villa fan again. Another phenomenal performance. A really nice Christmas present for the Villa fans. Obviously, it gives us all a massive lift. This lockdown, coronavirus still at large, and it just gives us all a massive lift because a win on Boxing Day to me, personally, and I'm sure to many other people, is just so special. Um, but uh, we obviously got a win last year on Boxing Day, but this year it just seems all that more special because of the phenomenal, phenomenal performance. Um, that we've just witnessed no, I don't think a player put a foot wrong honestly I think you, you're totally right I mean starting off the game we play, you know we started it in emphatic fashion again going 1-0 up it was a great run by Watkins and then Troy yeah. Ray there again it was a real nice finish and then it was typical Villa wasn't it one way traffic we were doing a lot of the pushing Palace looked quite dangerous on the counter Um and then Ming's a little bit of stupidity, really. Um, two silly challenges and and he's off. But I really want to talk about the second half with you. What what did you make of that sitting at home at half time? What what was going through your mind? Well, I was kind of uh, worried for the second half, honestly, because obviously we were down to 10 men. Obviously, it was really disappointed to lose Mings. And then um, it was actually a real big surprise that Smith bought off trial right just before half time as well because I thought he was looking really dangerous and obviously he hit the post and then he scored one as well. So it was a bit of a surprise. So I was thinking to myself, oh, no, it's, uh, it's going to be like maybe t- a typical Villa, uh, go 1-0 up and not be able to defend um, a 10, like a, a 1-0 lead like um, other teams can and have done against us in the past or have gone on to score even more goals. But um, we did just that today and I'm, honestly, we... Um, pushed on and I thought we were better against them with 10 men than we were of 11 we just were absolutely all over them with 10 men um, and yeah I don't think a player put a foot wrong in the, particularly in the second half as, as well um, I thought the full backs particularly were excellent particularly target I think he timed every single tackle he put in absolutely perfectly so I was really pleased with his performance and honestly one for both target and Kasher is one for um, Southgate to be looking at too much um, for a fullback option um, and also El Ghazi looks like a complete new signing I'm really pleased for him like obviously he's had a lot of hate on Twitter like some disgusting comments out there that have forced him to deactivate on social media which I think is disgusting for a player to have to do that um, so like I'm really pleased for him he looks like a new signing it was a great goal for him um, again Martinez I think still our best signing this season. Um, excellent again. Another clean sheet for him. I think he's almost breaking a record there um, in some sort of way. Um, and then Watkins as well. I was a bit disappointed he couldn't find his goal or couldn't find the net. Um, but again, thought he played really well. He was just really unlucky. And I'll tell you what, he was linking really well with Grealish towards the end there. Obviously, he had two good chances, but it was just wasn't him playing bad or bad shot or bad run or anything like that. It was just literally pure unluckiness, honestly. Um, and then obviously now sixth in the league, um, a great Christmas present, um, Chelsea to come, Man United to come. And honestly, I'm feeling really confident for both of those games. Me too. I think there was some massive standout performances today. Matty Target was unbelievable today. Literally nothing got past Target at all, all game. And immense. We've spoke on this podcast previously about how the development of our players are and it's all down to the coaching setup. And I think he's one of them. He's come on leaps and bounds and he's actually looking better and better every game. He's he's really impressing a lot of Villa fans at the minute. I thought Grealish was sensational on the counter-attack. He was he was devastating at times today. You know, like we're saying, we, we had 10 men and 
Today, I feel like it reminded me of the Rotherham in the championship. It, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. We went down to 10 men, but we weren't, we weren't there to sit back today and defend it. We were there to, to go for it and get that win. And I think that's a credit to this Aston Villa team at the minute. Um, so it's just absolutely massive. We're looking brilliant in the table now um, and bring on Chelsea and United. Thanks for coming on, mate. Can't wait for it, mate. Uh, look forward to it. Up the Villa. See you later. Merry Christmas. So next on this evening, we've got Liam. Uh, obviously, one of us didn't get the memo on the shirt selection, <laughs> but we've won 3 nil. so who cares? How are yeah. you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Very, very good after that, yeah. Having a good Christmas, and that, that's made it even better. Good stuff. So talk me through. What did you make of it? Um, well, I mean, obviously, it started off at the Martinez save early on. You thought... Could it be one of those days where we make, um, you know, make hard work of it again? Because we've done that with some of the home games, you know, and we've had games where we've been playing well and haven't quite got the results, but you know, they very quickly got the first goal. Um, I think it, it really all just comes back to Ali Watkins and and Emmy Martinez today. You think Martinez is potentially the sign of the season, and Watkins not far behind him. So although he didn't score. Everything he does makes such a big difference to us. You know, he's involved in all three goals. Um, I mean, he he can't buy a bit of luck at the moment, can he? But the performance was just sensational. I think he transforms the way we play. Yeah, just uh, can't speak highly enough of him. He's just brilliant with that hold-up play as well, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. so good. Like, he eases the pressure, especially today at times when we needed it, obviously, you know, with 10 men. Um, and, you know, I feel so bad that he's not getting in, he's not getting the goals, but he's, he's doing so much for that team. You know, yeah. he goes under the radar quite a lot with obviously a lot of his work rate, his runs off the ball. Um, he's just a great player. And, you know, he could have easily have got man of the match today. Um, but yeah. talk to me, how, how are you feeling about us obviously, you know, playing against 10 men, getting the win, Sixth in the league. What's your yeah. feeling about it all? I mean, it's it, it's surreal, isn't it? You know, you think um, you think back to last year, and we we would have made hard work of you know of, of going down to ten men. We made hard work of playing against ten men. You know, we, there wasn't the creativity there last year at times to break teams down. The, the teams just transformed. It's you know you you sort of starting to think. Can we go for Europe? I think at the moment, you think, why not? Um, it, it seemed like a bit of a pipe dream to begin with, you know, and we, we never would have thought at the start of the season. But, you know, the, the more the games go on, um, if we turn those kind of games into wins as well, we're doing well against the bigger sides, we're playing good football, um, we've got games in hand. I don't think they go into the next three games, you know, they're, they're tough, tough fixtures coming up after a good run. But you look at how we've performed already. I don't think they go into with any fear, and it, it, it's it's just brilliant to see. Regardless of what happens in the next three games, I think there's just so much credit. You think back to last year. You know, we looked after losing at King Power. You know, we were dead and buried, weren't we? And then Dean Smith yeah. kept his head, went away, came back again. You know, there were times you thought we were dead and buried after that, but it's it's just transformed. Up, up, you know, I can't give Dean Smith enough credit. He's so level-headed. He's he's just the work he's done is just sensational. Definitely. I mean, if if you look at it as well, four clean sheets in a row. We're going yeah. up against Chelsea and United now. Nothing to fear whatsoever. You know, we no. came out second half today with the belief that we were still going to win this game. There was no yeah. doubt in those Villa players' mind today that they were going to defend and defend and defend. We were still yeah. going to go for it. And, you know, you looked at Douglas Luiz in the second half, how high up the pitch he was. I've never yeah. seen him play so further forward. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But he's yeah. today changed with 10 men and, yeah. and that drove us forward. It could have been so easy to just stick him there and just sit in front of that back four. But he was yeah. taking through the lines all second half. It, it, I just can't yeah. believe how good we played, really. Um, yeah. And it just bodes well for the, for the future, you know. It's, <laughs> It's just so good. And I, I keep going on these podcasts and, and I get to a point where I just don't know what to say because <laughs> yeah, you, we were yeah. that good, do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's just so, so good to see us playing this way. And, and, and like you've just said, we've transformed the way 
the club is and the way we are playing. So let's yeah. look ahead then. So Chelsea United, what are you expecting points wise? What would you pay? <sighs> <laughs> it's hard to I mean points wise you know I'd take two points I'd take draws out of the game so I, I know how far we could maybe that's the pessimistic Villa fan in me you know maybe I should be more ambitious but um, I'd take that because I think they're still very tough games um, you know if we can come away from a game against United at Villa Park without losing it'll be uh, it'll be a miracle because we just you know I think back to all those games that we just United just come to Villa Park and win time and time again don't they so brilliant to get something out of that um, but yeah I think realistically I, I think at least two points I don't think we've got anything to fear um, anything can happen in this league this year as well if we got to a good start against those teams you know we make life difficult for them um, and we're defending well you know like United the one thing that well not the one thing but the, the main thing they've got going for them is that, that pacey attack and, you know, they cause teams a lot of problems. But we've really, you know, we've been solid. So I think last year you would have worried that we're going to leak goals all over the place. But I think at least two points, you know, but fingers crossed for a few more. I'll take four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, exactly. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still looking at fourth. I'll take four points. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I mean, if they do come out of those games with, you know, with something like that, um, well, yeah, you know, where can we end up? I think let's just enjoy it. I'm yeah. trying not to get too ahead of myself. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Anyway, um, Liam's yeah. got to go back and do his match report now. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, part way through. Everybody, check that. that out. Yeah. All right. Cheers, Thanks mate. Thanks for coming on, mate. See you later. So we're just going to do a little shout out now to one of our biggest fans. It was his eighth birthday the other day and his name is Harry Ray Fairbrother. I uh, hope you're listening and I hope you had a good birthday and a great Christmas. Uh, I just want to say for being our number one fan, we're going to give you a £50 Luke Roper online voucher. And um, that's our little treat um, for you for always listening so keep on supporting our little podcast and enjoying Aston Villa, up the villa, mate. Um, so next up, we've got Justin. Um, he's probably going to finish it off with a hat-trick of rendition, so take it away. Ain't nobody like El Ghazi. Makes me happy, makes me feel this way. Every time I do that, he scores, doesn't he? So what? I'm going to carry on doing it. An absolute <laughs> banger from him. I say it's peak Ronaldo, isn't it? That's what it is, mate. He's getting better and better, though. That's what we said the other day, isn't it? These players that we thought were probably going to, you know, be left by the wayside by us being better and better, they've come in, they've all stepped up, haven't they? They all want to, they all want to come with the, come with us on our journey, don't they? And fair play to every single one of them. Definitely. So for me, this is the Premier League version of Rotherham away said that earlier exactly the same just been saying it on a group chat exactly so I went to Rotherham away with my daughter and at half time vividly remember 1-0 down not played very well talking to my brother at half time and as they came out I said I always put um, I think it was the forward on it um, I can't think who it was now he put a forward on anyway at half time and I thought and we was talking oh is he going to go 4-4-1 four, four, and then within five minutes we realised he'd gone 4-3-2 went for it Tactical masterclass within 10 minutes with two on up. You know, exactly the same as today, really. Half time, you're thinking 1 0 down. You know, Palace have got loads of really good attacking players on the pitch. It's going to be backs against the wall. Can we just keep our 1 0 lead? How, how wrong was, was we on that? You know, literally just go for it. The second half, let's just go for it. Get a second, get a third. As they always did, the old adages use, isn't it? Best form of defence is attack. Totally right. If you ain't got the ball in our half, they're not going to be a threat, are they? I thought no. Palace were poor, to be fair, but I thought we were absolutely sensational today. I think, for me, that's probably one of the best performances we've had all season now. That That's going to go down for me as the best because, you know, our back should have been up against the wall. We, we should have had to have dig deep today, but it was the complete opposite. We were the team... In the ascendancy, really, on the counter attack, attacking totally. Douglas Louise was 
so far forward, you know, I think in that game against Rotherham, we brought on the striker, but especially with Louise today, we pushed him on even further and I thought he was brilliant. Um, talk to me about Matt Target. Well, it, it, another one that, that, you know, people had written off in the summer, you know, when we went on that bit of a spending spray, bought four or five players and I think everybody sort of thought if we do bring one more in on top of what we did, it probably would have been a left back because that's probably where everybody thought we were our weakest. But the bloke's just getting better and better. You know, another one. Just It's almost like they know, and I'm sure they do know, Matt Target is at a club now that within the next few years will be challenging, hopefully, in that top bracket of, of English football for trophies. You know, that's ultimately where we want to go. And he's only, he was in mid-20s, so he's more than good enough ability-wise, but he's probably been a little bit off it at times. I don't think, I think he would probably even agree to that. But, I mean, tonight, I, that was waxing lyrical about him on the on the commentary, weren't they? Martin Keown and, and, and whoever the main commentator was, and he was right. He hadn't he hasn't put and didn't put a foot wrong that whole ninety minutes. He, you know, whoever he was up against, you know, they got Ease, who was a very good player. Uh, Zaha was a very good player. tricky players that are difficult for fullbacks to sort of get hold of. Yeah, he, I think every single challenge he won, he won everything in the air. His, his um, positional play was very very good. You know, you wouldn't. You wouldn't probably swap him. Well, you probably well, no. Would you? Would you swap him for anyone else in no, the league at the moment? No, you wouldn't. Not on the form. You know, you see, you know, you know? Where, where I, I feel like he's got better. I feel like you know how aggressive Cash is. I feel like yeah. Target's become the same. I felt last season watching Target, he was quite timid, especially up against a pacey winger. So say Troy for for example, last season. But again, against Troy the other game, the other week. Phenomenal again tonight. He's there at the tackle every time, and he, he for me he believes he's going to win that ball every time. And mm. today, like you say, did not put a foot wrong. I thought Grealish was unreal on the counter. Watkins, I mean, I can take him not scoring because what he's doing for that team it's huge. It's it's massive what he's doing for us. Is it? It's a little bit like what. Firmino does for Liverpool. He doesn't get all of the goals, but his contribution to that team is just huge. So anyone else stand out for you today? I don't, you know, it's another game where I don't think you could pick anybody, can you? You pick everybody. You know, oh, Ming's totally daft. Once he got the first yellow, to do that, you know, I think Zaha's a bit, a bit naughty, really. I think he's a bit of a, you know, a naughty player doing what he did but I suppose as a forward player you do that's what you do don't you try and drag these defenders in and try and get them booked so I think he has already apologised I think on Twitter for what he's done but the 10 that remained on the pitch oh, they were all outstanding weren't they Watkins that second half as, as a lone target man playing with 10 the, the pressure on that lad every single time the ball goes up to him to do his job hold it up bring people into play it, it, the whole of the second half relies around him doing that, you know, had he had not been able to do that job properly, it doesn't give you opportunity to get further up the pitch and get them chances and start creating things. It all falls apart. He was sensational. You know, ten out it would have been a ten out of ten performance had he had just got one goal, I think, but apart from that he was not far off really, nine, nine and a half out of ten. Absolutely outstanding a lot of them. But I think what we're seeing now is which everybody knows in football, it's you know, when you're in form, you know, confidence is high. These are the performances you get. Every single player is playing with confidence now. Every single one of them. And yeah, I agree on the cash has brought targets game on because he's watching him thinking, God, he's got a lot of energy. He gets up and down. That's what I want to be doing. And that's what he's doing. House has come in, hasn't put a foot wrong for, for, out for three games now. We haven't conceded a goal in four in the league. You know, Martinez is outstanding. Consa comes on and within a minute, he's turning two players in the middle of the park and coming away with a ball. Louise is brilliant. McGinn's back to his best. Jack Grealish is the best player in the league. We've got a player in Watkins who's just going to get better and better. Two wingers who at the start of the season were fringe players and now turned into bloody Ronaldo and Messi. It's just unbelievable. You know, we are we are a very, very, very good team. We can now definitely start believing the hype. We've got some tough games coming up, but quite frankly, I'm ready for them now and I think the lads are ready for them. I think I saw a really good stat today. Villa Analytics on Twitter are very good. They always put these up. After 28 games last season, we got 25 points. 
We've now got 25 points after 13 games. <laughs> and our goal difference last season was minus 26 after 28 games. It is plus 14. If that ain't the biggest turnaround ever in Premier League history, I think the, probably the last biggest one was the Leicester one when they nearly went down. They went on to win the league. But apart from that, this is probably the biggest turnaround in, in, in a team I've seen in Villa's lifetime, I think. I, I can't remember a team going from what happened one season to what we are now witnessing now in a Villa side, ever. It's simply sensational. It, it, it's, it's remarkable. I mean, tell me a time as being a Villa fan where you're saying bring on Chelsea and bring on United. I mean, when I, first, when I was a lot younger... You know, it was different times and, and the, the people that watch this are probably are in the 40s like me. We'll remember a time when, when Arsenal, we were, you know, we'd won more trophies than Arsenal, we'd won more trophies than Chelsea, we'd won more trophies than all these sides. You know, it's a different time now. You are talking 30, nearly 40 years. When when I would I would get to Highbury and, and we'd, you know, we'd be confident of going to get the win, you know. But now it's different, you know. We are we are where we are. We've had the, year, the years we've had. So we are on our way back. But I honestly think now we are more than a match for any team in this country. Yes, on its day, anything and on a day, anything can happen. But we will go to Chelsea on Tuesday night, and they and we will give them a very, very hard game. You know, they're a half decent side, Chelsea, but we are a very good side. So bring them on, bring Liverpool on, bring Man United on New Year's Day, bring them all on, bring them all on. Thanks for coming on, mate. Up the Villa. Up the Villa.